I'm just kidding, that was just water. Um, but we are gonna drink some moonshine in this video. We're gonna sample three legal moonshine varietals. We have the Old Smoky from Tennessee, we have the Midnight Moon from North Carolina, and we have the Climax Moonshine from Virginia. We feel like this is a pretty good representation of the moonshine available. There are more products out there than what we have here, so if what you like the best isn't here and you think it, we should have reviewed it, just leave a note in the comments. Don't just blast the dislike button 50 times. <laughs> Uh, My maybe, cousin Bill makes the best stuff. <laughs> yeah, right. And we're and we're we're obviously we're reviewing legal moonshine right. here. We wouldn't be drinking moonshine that's not legal. We've got three southern states represented. Yep. So let's just dive right in. Yeah, and let's uh, let's get the tasting enough talking. Yeah. So we'll start here with old old Smokey from Gatlinburg, Tennessee. You can Ooh. get some really good airbrushing done in Gatlinburg. <laughs> so, and uh, you could also go to Ripley's, believe it or not, okay. museum. I believe Dollywood is in the neighborhood. Not too far. All kinds of stuff going on there. Great smoke in Nashville Park. That too. All right, we have to pause the video for one second. This is not Old Smokey's original corn. This is their white lightning. It's actually meant to be more of like a mixer. Watch it with the understanding that this is not technically a fair comparison of corn whiskeys, um, but you will get a good idea of what uh, more of like a sugar-based sugar shine would taste like compared to a corn whiskey. There you go. Yeah. I don't love the smell of it, honestly. It's you usually get a little bit of sweetness, I feel like, off the head. This does oh, yeah. not really have the, oh, the, the smell. Oh, the smell. Yeah, you generally... It's like if more we're, of an acetone, if you will. Yeah, I don't love the smell of that, and it's not very sweet. Yeah, that's uh, not my favorite. Just me personally, it doesn't have the corn flavor that I'm that I like. Maybe it's just like a very light corn flavor, maybe almost like a vanilla y flavor. A lot of vanilla tannins. Yeah. So just a little background on this the recipe. It's apparently a family recipe. I'm not sure which family it is or who it is. A uh, hundred hundred year old family recipe that was modified by Dave Pickerel. Right? So Dave Pickerel was the former master distiller at Maker's Mark, then split off from them, did his own thing. Uh, Whistle Pig. We actually just featured him in our last episode of Brew News, so if you haven't seen that, check it out. He just died, unfortunately, but the dude was like legit, very experienced. He helped them modify their recipe. So that's it. It is what it is. All right. It is what it is. This is... This is 80. 80, and then this is yeah, 90? 90. Okay. This is definitely <clears throat> a little bit, got some chill haze compared to that. I believe, unless it's just the light where I'm at. Oh, uh, yeah, a little bit. Yeah, maybe. Looks a little Which happens is a big deal. Label, I don't know. Yeah. Chew haze is just like it's cloudy because some oil is from corn. Or... Dude, see, see dude gin. smell that. You see in gins a lot. Smell that compared to this. Nothing. Interesting. I'm wondering if it's because this has more head space. That could be it. This I has this... like nothing from that. It's like it's a bottle of water. These, these folks have a real interesting story. Let's talk about the, uh, the flavor first. That is butterier. This guy? Yeah, I believe. A little bit more smooth. It's not as harsh. The flavor is there. It's on the very yeah. end. Yeah, that's the thing. It's a, it's a smoother, definitely a smoother taste. And you get a... It's and nice, it's, all the flavor kind of comes on the back end, but I don't love the back end flavor, honestly. I kind of like it. It sits in your tongue a little bit. Definitely a little bit oily. Dude, this has like a like a sugar cookie taste to it. That's what I'm tasting. Give it a little, give it a little try. Hundred percent, I like this better. Mm -hmm. No doubt, no question. I like, I like the sweetness at the end of this, and the yeah, it just kind of lingers on your tongue a little bit. Okay. Yeah, it's funny because the first time I tasted it, it didn't taste very sweet. Yeah. And then after tasting this and going back to that, it's really it's, sweet. it's very yeah. very sweet. Mm -hmm. um, so the interesting thing about the, this um, recipe here, they used the, the Junior Johnson recipe. He's this real guy who's a NASCAR driver, and he actually served 11 months in prison back in busted, like the 60s, right? Because yeah, he got busted. Apparently he was so fast they couldn't catch him in his car, and that might have been true because he was a NASCAR driver like in the 60s. I'm sure he had a badass car. The guy literally won 50 NASCAR races. They, they caught him out of still, right? So he goes to prison for 11 months. And then in the 80s, Ronald Reagan gave him a pardon. 
for his uh, distilling related crimes. Interesting. Yeah. Then this distillery went to him to help with the recipe formulation. Um. Yeah, I that guess so. They out, used. Yeah. yeah, they used his recipe, and I'm sure it's been modified as well. But um, imagine that you get busted making moonshine, and then you get to meet a president. Yeah. Because of it. I thought that happened today. <laughs> right. Okay, so so this Climax Moonshine made by Tim Smith, obviously best known for um, wearing overalls without t-shirts under and also being on the um, Moonshiners TV show. All right, last one. So Climax Moonshine, Virginia. So like that's... That's, that's the smell one I'm I looking know. for. That's the smell yeah. I know. That smells like corn whiskey. It's got a great like corn smell. It's, it has some sweetness to it. Are you doing sour mash on that? I don't know. And then Climax is because he's from Climax, Virginia originally. Right. I always thought it had some other connotation. A little, little innuendo. Mm-hmm. It could be. could be. Man, that's, wow, that's front forward, if you will. Like, man, it's got a way better flavor. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to say I really like that. Yeah. Probably the best. I, that has way more flavor on the front. I feel like this has a really nice flavor on the really back end that I like, but this is definitely more flavorful and reminiscent of what corn whiskey. Like a true corn yeah, whiskey. Yeah, like what be. corn whiskey should be. Yeah, I'm just gonna order it number one by far. Mm -hmm. and this is my personal opinion. 100% like blows both of these away. In terms of taste, yeah, flavor, smell, right. I even like kind of like. The way it dances on your tongue, mm -hmm. if you will. Probably should taste it once more. Yeah, try it again. Just make sure. Right. Make sure it's still good. Because it's been two minutes. Yeah. These folks only say they're made with corn. Actually, this says 100% corn right on the back. It does, yeah. This here says uh, corn, malted barley, rye, That's and sugarcane. It must be the barley and the rye that are kind of lending to the flavor. A little bit of spiciness maybe from the rye. Right. In my opinion, there's a difference between spirits that are distilled in the copper still versus a stainless, all stainless still, mm -hmm. you know, like some adding some copper or doing the whole thing in copper definitely makes it taste better, in my opinion. Yeah. From the stuff that, you know, whiskey and whatnot that I've tasted. So this is sort of just conjecture here. Uh, and I'm just going out on the limb, but maybe these folks use a copper still, these use all stainless. Yeah, I don't know. I wonder, or they're using a combination, you know, stainless boiler copper column. But yeah, in terms of, of these three, I would put this all the way over here and put those kind of over there. Right. 